Now the Kenyan Revenue Authority is investigating the use of AI and machine learning technology to analyze large data sets and find patterns of tax fraud. Now the use of the AI machine learning and application programming interfaces, according to the KRA Commissioner General Humphrey Watanga, would be essential to boost in revenue mobilization through increased efficiency, accuracy and compliance. Following a 12-year inflation low, Kenya's central bank has implemented its largest interest rate cut to support economic growth. The key rate was lowered by the Monetary Policy Committee from 12.75% to 12%. Now, out of the eight economies surveyed by Bloomberg, just one had anticipated a cut of this magnitude, with three predicting a shift to 12.25%, another three observing 12.5%, and one anticipating a freeze on rates. Joining me now from Nairobi, Kenya, live is Churchill Ogutu, who is economist with IC Asset Managers. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Churchill. Good morning to you. Great. It's, it's great to have you on the show. Well, let's begin with the reasons for the central bank lowering the benchmark rate to 12%. And how does this reflect current economic trends as well? Uh, one, uh, we've seen from a global arena that there's a broadwide uh, easing cycle that started from the Fed and also a number of other central banks have been on an easing cycle. And if you look at the domestic factors, one of them is now inflation. Uh, if you look at the start of the year, inflation was around 9%. It has now come to around 3%. So that's a dis nice disinflation trend in Kenya's uh, economics. And if you look at the other factor is now the shilling. Shilling has strengthened around 18% from a year-to-date basis. And that obviously reduces the uh, risk of imported inflation. So these two factors that inflation has come off quite easily, uh, quite nicely, and also the fact that we have a stable currency which has been on an appreciation trend has lowered the risk of uh, inflation go flaring up. So from that perspective, inflation outlook is seen to moderate, and that has now sort of uh, uh, convinced the policymakers to lower the policy uh, rate by 75 basis points that came out yesterday. So from a policy uh, perspective, if you look at the real rate, so basically where the policy rate was before this action, um, minus uh, inflation that was there in, in August, so basically the ex post uh, real policy rate, it was around 9%. So this is one of the highest uh, police positive uh, real rates that we're seeing on the continent. So there was still some scope for the central bank to lower the, the interest, uh, to lower the policy rate further. Well, risk control is always uh, quite useful. But with inflation easing to 3.6%, is this rate cut enough to boost growth without reigniting re inflation? Yes, uh, if I look at it, one of the metrics that came out from the monetary policy statement was the private sector credit growth. Uh, so this... Uh, growth was at 1.3 percent this is on a rolling basis up until august 1.3 percent so this is quite low from history from historic levels and on the other side you find that core inflation this is basically the inflation stripping off the volatile food inflation and the fall inflation at 3.6 percent so this is still uh, within the target band at least on the lower end of the target band so from those perspective is that the authorities will want to stimulate credit in the economy at least to boost this private sector credit growth higher but still there's still some scope to do that because core inflation is still quite uh, subdued so that means that yes they have reduced the policy rate, but it will not have that inflationary impact from the simple reason that co-inflation has been quite subdued for a long period of time. All right, certainly. I mean, Churchill, it's, it's quite steep, we'll all, we'll all uh, agree, but how will this rate cut affect key sectors like banking, real estate, manufacturing? Yeah, uh, two of those sectors are interest rate sensitive. Uh, so that's the banking and also the real estate. So from a banking perspective, I'm looking at it this way. Uh, obviously, uh, the CBR is a signaling, signaling tool to the banks. And we expect that banks will now take the queue and lower the, their lending rates, obviously with some lag. And uh, on the financial stability sector, the other thing that came out from the monetary policy statement was now the toxic assets. So basically the non-performing loans at 16.7%, this is quite a record high in recent uh, period. So obviously the 
uh, the borrowers have not been able to service their loans because of the high interest rate environment. So lowering it lower will give them some sort of reprieve. And this will also sort of address the toxic assets that we are seeing in the banking sector. On the real estate, uh, from a supply perspective, obviously it will benefit the developers and the contractors. But from a demand perspective, Kenyan mortgage uptake is quite low. Only 30,000 Kenyans, less than 30,000 Kenyans have mortgage uh, uh, facilities with the banks. And I'm seeing that even this uh, rate cut will be met with some agnostic uh, outtake. So they will not be convinced either way to take up mortgage unless we see uh, the benchmark rate and also the mortgage rates at single digit levels. But at these levels, they are still elevated. So uh, I mean, borrowers will still be agnostic uh, to take up uh, mortgage despite yeah. this rate cut that came up. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm about to ask you about borrowing costs for businesses and consumers. What impact will this reduction have on them? You know, uh, agnostic, as you mentioned, but uh, what more can we learn about that? Yeah, obviously, uh, the banks, we should expect them that they will take the cue from the CBR uh, having been lowered uh, to 12%. So obviously, the lending rates will come lower. And also from an expectations level, we've seen even the surveys that were conducted conducted before the this monetary policy committee meeting uh, surveys to the agricultural sector, the CEOs were basically showing some inflationary uh, decelerating in the near term. So obviously from the business perspective, they expect that they will not uh, they will not have the inflationary flare even from some of the cost uh, pressures coming into their businesses. So that even from a bank's perspective, the risk premium will also come lower eventually, and that now fits into the lower lending rates. And obviously the last couple of months you've seen, uh, the CBK is sort of putting out uh, data on the lending uh, rates by banks, uh, granular details, based the type of the loans, be it the personal, be it the business or the corporates, and also the maturity and giving sort of a, a data of which are the highest lenders in the market. So even from a customer perspective, uh, they are able to choose which banks offer affordable rates. So it's quite benefiting uh, that rates are, are being signaled to come lower and the banks that are quite fast to adjust their lending rates lower will be able to benefit all right, so there's some measures put in place there. That's, uh, that's good to learn. But now, in, in an age of technological trends, how is the KRA leveraging AI and other technologies to enhance tax compliance and detect tax cheats more effectively? Uh, yes, uh, the, now, um, the news about the AIA came off sometime early this week during the KRA summit that started uh, on Monday, coming to an end today. But I think that is still aspirational in the sense that we've had uh, on a rolling basis, there are normally corporate plans, three-year plans, five-year plans. Uh, they've mentioned efforts to be able to embrace technology. The previous one ended in the financial year that ended in June 2024. Uh, there were talks, uh, they implemented a few of those things, uh, things as, such as cargo monitoring, uh, the ones that go to other countries, landlord countries nearby. And also there's the implementation of ETIMS, basically electronic tax invoice management system. So that has been quite, uh, was quite salient at the beginning of this year. So it's still being rolled out. At least that is one way of trying to address the issue of uh, bringing in many taxpayers into the tax bracket. So that is a plus. But as far as AI is concerned, obviously that is still aspirational. The, the KRA is in the process of now bringing on board the next or the ninth corporate plan, which will be within the current financial year. It started in July and it's going all the way up until June 2029, a five-year plan. So that is where probably we'll now be able to get more details as to exactly how they'll be able to incorporate uh, aspects such as AI into their plans to be able to tax uh, to to net in the tax sheets. Got it. But priorities priorities first, you say. Churchill, yes. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the Global Business Report. We'll see you again very soon. All right.